afternoon. Big one, so. <laughs> Good afternoon, everybody. I think I will start uh, with this uh, four minutes movies that uh, <coughs> that is uh, quite interesting. It's been it's been a while that is happening in Indonesia. It was it was movie that uh, made by our Ministry of Tourism. Um, this this short uh, the four four minutes movie is actually is the is to shows the 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 result of the sustainable tourism that have been in place. Um, apparently, this is the one of the uh, village in Bali that have been have been uh, developed, have been maintained, and uh, and this village have been given a lot of reward, receiving a lot of uh, acknowledgement, not only. Uh, national acknowledgement, but also from international uh, companies. Dan ini tentu akan berkembang lingkungan lebih bersih, alam kita menjadi bersih. Ya memang pengiporan ini bisa dibuktikan kebersihannya, karena kami kelola dengan sistem. Nah kebersihan wajib dijaga, sehingga kami mampu meraih penobatan dari media sosial disebut sebagai salah satu desa terbersih di Dunia. One, of the cleanest, one of the cleanest village in the world. That's, that's something that we can be proud of. Karena tanpa menjaga itu, kami yakin bahwa pariwisata yang berkelanjutan tidak bisa akan dijaga dan tidak bisa juga akan berjalan sebagai masa mestinya. Another village actually is located in the central of Java. Gunung Kidul merupakan salah satu atau mempunyai destinasi pariwisata yang saat ini bisa dikembangkan ataupun sedang berkembang dan juga banyak berkunjung ke Gunung Kidul. Langgran ini mempunyai potensi alam namanya Gunung Langgran. Awal mula sebelum uh, dinamakan Gunung Api Purba ini merupakan Gunung Langgran. Setelah kami menyadari kita kami ada potensi di Gunung Api Purba ini, kemudian banyak wisatawan orang yang berkunjung di Langgran ini, uh, kami bersama-sama dengan masyarakat kelompok-kelompok masyarakat mencoba mengelola mengolah potensi sehingga wisatawan bisa kita arahkan agar wisatawan orang yang datang ke Nagara ini tidaknya uh, melakukan concept. trekking naik gunung. It is located in the very dry area Akhirnya, of Gunung Kidul of Kidung, kami uh, tidak Kidung, uh, sia -sia. Uh, Banyak penghargaan yang kami peroleh dengan kami mengembangkan pariwisata berbasis masyarakat. Salah satunya kami diapresiasi jadi salah satu desa wisata terbaik ASEAN atau CBD. Kemudian kami juga diapresiasi pemenang ISTA Indonesia Sustainable Tourism Award yang mengantarkan kami e, menuju ASTA ASEAN Sustainable Tourism Award. Ini adalah sebuah capaian dari hasil kerja keras kami bersama masyarakat. Indonesia dengan paduan alam, budaya dan manusianya adalah fakta yang menguatkan pariwisata bisa berkelanjutan. Pariwisata Nusantara berevolusi dan berkembang mengikuti kemajuan zaman. Demi keberlanjutan pesona Indonesia. Semakin dilestarikan, semakin mensejahterakan. So since we start the movie with Indonesian language, is that possible that if I continue the discussion in Indonesian language? <laughs> no, joking. I'm sorry. Um, we are going to talk about sustainability tourism, which is uh, four years ago actually is a, is a, is a new animal to me. Um, we are now having a few uh, expertise that we can uh, we can learn of, and I believe that. Uh, 
four of our great panelists, they are have they are have been doing they have been doing a lot on on this uh, sustainability tourism, especially not only in Bali but also in other part of the world. So let let me start with uh, with what what is what is this kind of animals actually? What is sustainability actually in 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 uh, each of you your mind? Um, let's let's start with uh, with uh, let's start with Eric. Um, you can you can introduce yourself and just answer the question. Thank you, thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. I think to summarize, sustainability is a process, and when we tend to talk about sustainability, we we think first, let's go to the checklist. What are the things we need to do? But that list of criteria and best practices of today was innovative 20 years ago, right? The LED lighting, um, you know, daylighting, all those kind of things. And what's going to be innovative today will be common in 20 years. And so it is a process, and it, you need to think about sustainability, think about what can be done, what can be improved throughout your hotel deal cycle, uh, new development, renovation, acquisition, operations. So sustainability is a process for looking at all of these aspects throughout your business. By the way, Eric is the founder and CEO of Greenview. And you've been doing this kind of uh, consultancies not only for the owners, but also for the operators. Am I right? Correct, yes. What do you think, John? Sustain sustainability is, um, from an architect's standpoint, really is about producing something. I mean, architecture, construction takes up like 80% of greenhouse gases or something, it's one of the biggest contributors to the problem that we have. Um, so our education really does, at least my education, really did focus on doing the best you can as a steward of the, of the environment, right? The, the problem that we have is all these measurements, if you will, um, been relying, a lot of them have been relying on technology. So if you want to be sustainable in producing the electricity, you might need to have a battery. But a battery has precious metals in it. If you want to reduce the, the air conditioning, you have better performing glass. But there's precious metals in that glass. So you're, you're doing one thing, and you're depleting another. So th is that really sustainable? I don't know that it is. I drive an electric car I have for five years. I love it. but. It's not, you know, producing that car isn't really sustainable. Re reusing it will be, but the initial impact isn't there. So what is it to me? It's, it's an ongoing discussion, and it's just being aware and making the right decision and trying to improve each time. Um, By the way, John is the principal of Smallwood, uh, the, the architect, and I would like to get more ideas about that, uh, that concept in the, in the mind of education. Mr. Devaruchika is the, is the uh, central director, center director of internal, international class uh, in uh, STP Bali, in Nusa Dua. Probably you can share what is in your mind. Thank you, Pak Satria. I agree with uh, Eric and John, but perhaps in addition to that, I believe sustainability is a belief. So if you don't believe in sustainability, it's very hard to apply and be creative in that. Yeah, that's why in educational side, we try to put this paradigm from the beginning. So when the student is there, so they know from their heart before they are born in this industry, they are already having the belief of sustainability. So if I go back with uh, 20, 30 years ago when we start the uh, tenor in the industry, splitting up the trash, organic, non-organic, we start doing that. But by the time we are having that, the truck coming and we start putting it together again. So that's how we don't know yet about this uh, sustainability in that matter. But now, even the student themselves, they are the one that asking, why this, why that, why not doing this, why not doing that? Uh, I've been in the industry before joining academic for around 30 years. So what I learned from the industry, uh, some idea of sustainability that benefiting the PNL will be very easy to apply. 
something like uh, when you don't use your towels, we will not change, or your used soap, we can turn it again into a new soap, something like that. It is benefiting the DNL, right? But when it comes to something that costly, that spending things, a uh, few people or few friends in industry still have, have some hesitation in doing that. Right? So I believe if we start putting the thing into a paradigm of our future generation, I'm sure in our next generation, the sustainability is like uh, a must, not something to be debated, something like that. Yeah. Thank you, Pastor. Pa Agung, what do you think? Pa Agung, um, pa Agung is the practitioner actually. He is the CEO of uh, Jimbaran Hijau, and uh, yeah, I would like to have your thought. Okay, uh, in my case is uh, I'm managing uh, land about uh, 100 hectare, let's say, in Jimbaran. So the thinking I was thinking to what to to do on it is like a blank canvas. I think sustainability is uh, the thing that uh, came to my mind. I was doing research on it, but it's a big word. So uh, the essence of it is uh, people planet profit. That's the essence of sustainability uh, in our perspective, but also uh, observing, in my case, I'm observing what is not, uh, uh, I swatted basically destinations that uh, already exist in Bali. Why is, uh, what's the weaknesses and threat? For example, like some destination in Bali like really pack the roads, the infrastructure is bad and then like, maybe not, uh, involving the locals, there is local issues in Bali sometimes like that. So I think the essence is having balance and then uh, use what you need. That's also the other thing. Like in Jimbaran, I'm trying to create like uh, events, for example, that bring people together. For example, like uh, Inusa Dua is a, a sterile complex. Uh, the complex in Jimbaran that we do, we're trying to bring inclusivity instead of exclusivity. So I, I, I put different elements. Of course, we do like when uh, not allowed to cut trees in our area, whether we, you move it and when you need to chop or something, the, 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 the leaves and stuff, we can put it in some place that become uh, compost and blah, 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 something like this. And trying to work with the local, uh, that's the village perspective finding balance. I also happen to be uh, green Building Council had, it's basically uh, efficiency. The essence is, for example, when people, uh, mechanical, electrical, uh, aircon designer, they like to design slightly over. So how we value engineer it so become just right. So for example, we aim a uh, room to be like 24, 25. That's the aim. So how to reduce the over uh, power or something. So something like that, my perspective. Okay. Um, it's, it's quite interesting. There is one statement that you just mentioned that sustainability actually is the people, planet, and profit. Um, I believe that everybody in these in these uh, rooms, we have been doing this for years, or for many years already. I still remember that uh, when when we are still the GM of the hotels, we are. We, this is already a brand standard of our company that we have to print the, we call it a green card. And we didn't, this, this green card actually at that time, the, even the GM is so proud of it, like, I have a green card. So the green card is only to try to reduce the, the doing the laundry of the linen and towels and so on. But, but it takes a while until, until our customers is, is learning about this, these methods. Um, I would like to know how we can emphasize, especially on the people, Pak Rujigam. Yeah, I agree with that, Pak Satria. That's, that's, the, time, that, that's the thing. Yeah. So if I may uh, tell a little bit what, on what we do in, in the universities. Uh, in education science in Indonesia, we have three things that we have to do as our obligation, basically. So we call it three dharma perguruan tinggi. Yeah. Tridharma Perguruan Tinggi is first lecturing themselves. And lecturing, of course, we integrate all of the sustainability into the student. So the curriculum, the syllabus and everything, even one unit of the curriculum is especially talking about sustainability. 
So we try to make the people ready from the beginning. Yeah. Second thing is research. Yeah. Uh, research is, like you said, sometimes people don't feel the impact of sustainability if no like uh, data, something like that. So in this research, we try to have like uh, data, surveys and everything that proving to people that sometimes the green idea is also impacting to the business. Some segmentation of the market, they're concerned about sustainability. So why don't we do something like that? So with um, uh, data, hopefully some people that don't really have that belief can become that kind of thing. And the third one is contribution masyarakat. This is contribution to the community. So uh, one of the stakeholders that's very important in this sustainability is the community itself, right? So by having uh, talk with the communities and make them understand what is this sustainability is all about, uh, what is the impact on the future generation and everything. So that's hopefully will change the paradigm of uh, people in the stakeholder. Yeah, that's what we do. Yeah, but um, in, um, this is what I thought. This is what I thought as a as a newcomers on this kind of uh, of earth. Um, we always we always do based on numbers. Um, it's very difficult even if you have to teach the student, if you have to convince even to convince the owners that we have to do this because of because of the profit, the numbers. Mm. Eric, is there any any helps that we can that uh, we can have? I mean, we, we need to prove someone. We need to give a proof that look why, why when we are doing this kind of uh, exercise, there will be a bottom line that will affect it or something. Yeah. Well, you talk of sustainability. You're going to talk definitely to the owner versus your staff versus the community versus the guest versus the corporate customer. Right? There's a different conversation and dialogue, and so. We're under the premise, or we used to be, that the owner has to talk dollars and cents because don't want to spend money, uh, don't understand the benefits in that. Um, and it, we have a problem of actual data, right? So just on this part of the owner and the data, um, they want to know what's the ROI. And even though we don't really quantify a lot of times the individual actions we do in a renovation, okay, we need to put in a better fitness center, we need to put in a better F&B, better Wi-Fi, we don't really have a quantified ROI on that. We know overall like, we're going to try to do these actions to raise the you know, raise the rates, raise the occupancy. But in sustainability, for some way, put on this ultra lens. So the way we've tackled it is, um, is our benchmarking. And so we can take data from a market and, and the process of understanding the data and how it works. And so South Bali, for example, we have for energy 48 hotels in our latest study. The average energy per square meter is 130 kilowatt hours for the lower quartile. And the upper quartile is 270. So there's a two-to-one ratio among resort hotels in South Bali from the upper to lower quartile of two-to-one. Now, if utility costs are four, five, six percent of revenue, and you can save one percent of revenue by going toward that lower end on things that goes straight to the bottom line, then that should build the business case. And then you, then you go and say, okay, here are the suite of things that you can do from the CapEx side, you know, that kind of thing. But really, then, you got to get into how are you going to motivate your staff? Because it's going to be the housekeeper who's going to catch that leak on the toilet and fix it, and you have to motivate the staff. So that's a different question. But for the owners, try to present that way of the business case in energy, water, percent of your revenue. Here's the range of this market. And go talk to your architect, your designer, your, your uh, operator on how we can get toward that lower side. OK, then in this case, who is the one who in the hotels that should, should drive this? the GM or the owner itself should involve? Well, I mean, you have some owners who love this, but if not, the GM has to give the mandate, and then you have to find the people who are passionate about it on property. Line level, mid-level, top level. You have, in every hotel, you're going to have a handful of people who really care for different reasons. Get them together, get them the tools, get them the mandate from the GM, and, and let them go. And, and then focus on people. Okay. John, about the designing of the property. Uh, I believe that there is a few, uh, even few consultants and a few, a few uh, companies, they are very concerned on the, on the green uh, building concept. Even they have their, the numbers that they have, uh, the numbers that they have to follow. 
um, to make sure that our building is is having having the green concept. Um, how how you see that the the especially the owners of in in Indonesia adapting that? Well, in, in Indonesia, I think if you're dealing with a place like Bali, I think there's more of a emphasis on on the eco side so that you can sell that. If you're talking about Jakarta, it depends on the client, but usually it gets back to just money and whatever the government is imposing relative to water use. I mean, that's the big problem is water use in, in Jakarta. And then, you know, the, the, the mechanical systems to cool it, you know, it, it's it's a it's a hodgepodge. You know, you can come in and do something, but it, it's the follow through. I think that if you have a a, a strong support from the top, whether it's in the company, whether it's in the government, or wherever coming down, and you have them educated, that's how you get the change. That's how it improves. But it's not it's not about saving money, really. I mean, it should be in the end of the day that you are saving resources. Therefore, you'll be re saving money, but the cost of the resources is, you know, artificially low. So the value that we're placing on these things to compare these decisions, I think, is flawed. Yeah. You, know, you know, so if you can get oil for ten cents, and it really should cost ten dollars, yeah. what, what do you do with that? Okay, uh, uh, I want to add here that. Uh, the cost itu, uh, I was uh, researching, for example, like in Jakarta, one of construction company, they, they will help to design uh, to be a green building, green apartment, green hotel. The, the rule of thumb is 6 to 9% uh, additional. So how you achieve that is basically the, uh, from the 100% of your cost, when you value engineer like 6 to 9%, you put that green element. So that's how should I mean, get the, the thing. And the other thing is that green is like a religion. It's, um, it's, it's hard, I mean, you know, I think that's the angle when people believe in it and make effort on it and people don't care and it's uh, don't care. Like uh, now in, uh, I'm like green building, uh, green building council of Indonesia. So now two uh, cities like uh, DKI Jakarta and Bandung because Ahok and Ridwan Kamil they have the, the per group or perda that emphasize uh, on the, the, the building should be green certified even though it's not uh, as in uh, how that, uh, hukuman, uh, uh, penalty yeah. is, is, but it's, uh, how, how to put it, they, they, you have to do it like certified, tapi belum uh, keras, I mean the emphasis, emphasis on it. So now, um, Bali is going towards there, which uh, I'm very happy on, uh, for example, plastic at uh, December 2018, uh, governor uh, emphasized that no plastic single use. So they, they, I mean, I have experience, of course, when, when we go shopping now in, in Bali, you need to bring your bag, basically. It's like, uh, I'm, I'm quite proud of it. I mean, even order food, you, you carry the food, no bag, on the, to buy a bag is like one dollar that, yeah, whether you want it, no, you carry. And then also like uh, straw. When a restaurant in Bali still have like plastic straw, the customer can complain and it looks funny on the restaurant or cafe owners in, in Bali. Now it's getting it's standard on no plastic straw, so that's a good uh, <coughs> progress in my perspective. Okay. Um, to think widely on this, on this kind of program, actually, uh, people intend, in, intend that uh, when we are not uh, experienced ourselves, we are not going to be concerned on it. How we can encourage this, this, uh, these uh, people? How we can encourage the, not only the people, but the, the company, the, the people, the owners? Because it's happened, uh, this is, this is, this is uh, happened to myself actually, because uh, it was happened about two and a half years ago. I was uh, diving in Padang Bay. When I reached to the depth of 15, meet, 15 meters, 
I cannot see any fish. But I see a lot of colors. Blue, bottles, plastics. Since that day, actually, I just realized, like, look, this is, this is the thing that I have, to, I have to react. I have to do something. How we can, how we can speed up? Because to wait, waiting for this kind of experience, it will take 100 more years. What do you think, Barajika? <laughs> As uh, I mentioned earlier, it's a belief, Barajika. So if, me personally, I think belief should be from the beginning, from our cultures and everything. But during this process, of course, a regulation is needed. Gitu ya. Like Pak Agung mentioned, the governor decree, for instance. So in 2018, at least there are three decrees that I know that related to this uh, local wisdom, uh, uh, conservation and everything. So one is the uh, using Balinese attire as uh, conservation of our traditional of Bali, which is today supposed to be every Thursday, every full moon, every Balinese calendar, that uh, holiday, we're supposed to use Balinese attire, which is a good thing, yeah. That's decree of se number 79, 2018, something like that. Number 80 is using Balinese... Uh, attire. Uh, no, Balinese letter, yeah, yeah, letter. Yeah, Balinese letter in everything. It's also conservation of uh, culture of Bali and plastic itself, number 97. That decree, in my opinion, is a pushing to people for using that one because the level of belief is not that much yet. So I think slowly we should educate our future generation until there is a belief on this. But meantime, we have to admit that some of our generation is not in that level yet. So have to be with some push by the decree of regulation. Big brand here like uh, Hilton, Accor, Marriott and everything, I'm sure there is some push from the head office of doing this effort. But in Bali, we have 125,000 rooms, Koskosan, villas, homestay, and everything, which they don't have push from anybody, right? So it should be a push from the government, in my opinion, before we have a future generation that believe in this kind of sustainability. Can like can I add? Uh, I'd, I'd like to add also, uh, I think like experience is uh, make impact, like education ex experience. In uh, our area, uh, Jalan Karangmas, that means uh, from the roundabout to Ayana is about three kilos. I noticed a lot of rubbish, so yeah. uh, one day uh, I tell the head of village, let's do some cleaning together uh, with a lot of effort and invite all the neighbors to clean. Then we split each hotel, for example, like 200 meters Hotel X, 200 meters Hotel Y. So need to organize it. I was like with the team uh, leading it. Uh, two hours we were cleaning the road, basically picking up plastic and stuff. It impacted me personally. Every time I open a plastic aqua bottle, just two hours, yeah. Two hours I was cleaning with hand and put gloss and everything, two hours. From after that two hours, every time I open aqua bottle, plastic, it like, it's a bit painful, like, uh, like that. It's, uh, that's my personal experience. So maybe uh, it will impact uh, different people differently, but to me, it's after cleaning, yeah. yeah. Oh, by the way, um, Eric, about uh, from the from from the uh, from the green view, uh, what do you think that 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 green view can contribute to the to the to the business? What can you provide to the to the hotels and and uh, to the owners? to speed up this, this, this process. <laughs> yeah, so definitely to speed up things. I mean, I think awareness was the big issue the last decade, but the tipping point is already here. Uh, the younger generation is aware, they're becoming more active. You're gonna see the biggest activist climate action in two weeks. There's gonna be a global climate strike led by young people. Uh, there's gonna be UN talks. There's gonna be so much out there. Um, I mean, what we try to do as a company, for an industry, we try to catalyze. We try to build the knowledge base so we can move the best practices to become common and the innovative practices to become best practices. Um, we also try to, we just help companies deal with all the myriad of issues, right? There's compliance, there's, um, you know, issues that they have to sort of push that the industry is asking you to do. So we help, you know, companies navigate, set their program, set their strategy, implement, work with all the data, and then do the reporting when it's needed. Um, 
and, and there's just so many things that come up in it, but I think now going to this, it, it, there is such a focus now to shift on experiences. We have to think back, what do people care about? You know, what does the guest care about? What do people care about the experience, they care about their health, and they care about other people. And we kind of got things wrong in sustainability before because it's so esoteric. You care about the planet. That's, you know, and we messed it up with that linen towel use card. That was probably the worst thing we could have done in the industry. <laughs> because basically we're saying, dear guest, staying in our hotel is bad for the environment. You give up a level of service and we save money. And then they have this like horrible messaging, which is, it was horrible, yeah. right? So we've gotten past it. Now, Accor actually does a great job with saying, if you do this, we're planting a tree for you. Now, you can go a step further, it's this forest, and you may go hiking in that forest because that forest is in this destination. Or, like, soap donation, clean the world. Um, housekeepers find meaning in their jobs because the soap is going to places they come from a lot of times. Um, or tell the story, okay, this comes from a local farm, this comes from a local community of, of artisans, and so who are the people? Um, that storytelling of how your actions are positively affecting the destination, the environment, other people, and your health, um, that's what was missing, and, and we're now getting there. And, and people don't like plastic anymore. They, they want to understand what can we do. And so there's a big awakening now. Um, and the final thing I think that um, where we help people grapple with is exactly what you, know, what you were saying. Is it's so complex, and um, you know, it's, it's, it's you know, putting together a puzzle. Now everybody is, is thinking about it. We weren't before. Obviously, we've always been using straws and, and, and plastic in our last generation, but now we're considering where did this come from and where is it going? And so, okay, now we've got glass bottles, that's great, but now we're going to start thinking, well, what's the transportation of the glass? It's more than the plastic, can we do something on site? But we're evolving in that. And so um, it's, it's, it's daunting for companies. And you saw last year, everybody's coming out with the straw. You know, no more straws. And this year, now Marriott, IHG, no more shampoo bottles. Right? What's going to be next year, next year? And I think hotels kind of missed the boat on this because there's so many pre-competitive actions Hotel companies could have got together and realized, let's figure this out. The destinations can get together and say, let's go find suppliers, let's go find common solutions and scale them up. Um, so we need to talk a little more amongst each other. And that's where we need to get owners involved in the conversation because they've been missing from this whole dialogue. Is there any numbers that you ever measure, for example? Um, how this, this, uh, this, this uh, exercise affected to the to the cost of the hotels or to the profits. Is there any numbers that you ever, ever uh, exercise on it? It's tough, and we try to get away from that. I mean, um, if you get into the sort of the certification or the, the green building, they, they have better numbers because you know, they, they know about construction costs and how much that costs. But the platform is so much more sort of complex than that. What's the, what's the cost of, and everything is sort of incremental. Mm -hmm. What I think is, if you look at it holistically and say, okay, something's gonna cost us more, something's mm -hmm. gonna cost us less. Yes, we're going to change to more expensive straws, but we're going to change the SOP so they give it only upon request. And then yeah. that kind of thinking can help balance it. So it's tough to say, but if you look at companies, most of the company's value has been proven it's intangible. And sustainability adds an intangible value to your product and your service. Yeah. Okay. Um, John, um, I'm facing a few customers that uh, is very hard, actually, at the beginning to complain, to convince the, the, the owners that you have to adapt the green kind of building. Do you have any, any, any tips? Yeah. <laughs> tips on, on how to convince an owner to spend more money because at the end of the day he might be getting the rest back? Uh, I, don't, I, don't, um, I think the tip is make sure the owner has a child that's... Uh, <laughs> talking to them about it because the, uh, you, owners, everybody's different. I mean, the generationally, I think it's different also. And I think as the new owners are becoming more aware, it's like what you're saying, you know, it's, it, is, it is becoming a, it's ingrained in our education now. It's ingrained in all this so that, that that's changing. I can't convince somebody to do something if they don't want to do it, if they don't believe me. Um, I can just do my job and show them at the end of the day that it'll work. Okay. Okay. Um, let's see what is the response from our our um, from our guests in here. There is one question: Name some hotels in Indonesia that have set the bar for sustainability 
and in what way? Did you have any any hotels uh, experience maybe in maybe Indonesia? Maybe I, uh, I was involved in uh, auditing two hotels that uh, register, uh, Sanur Mercure and the new Six Senses. So um, GBCE, uh, as in Green Building Council Indonesia team, auditing these two, I mean, they interested to be audited. That's specifically it, but... Uh, so these two hotels can be the, can be the sample? They participate on, they want to be... Uh, audited to be green certified. So that's a young, young the, the one is done. Yeah. The one is done and built operating hotel. Good, 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 good. Good. And the second question is that, uh, this is for Eric. What pushback do you get from the hoteliers and hotel owners <laughs> regarding sustainability <laughs> issues? <laughs> it depends on, depends on who, right? But the pushback, um, pushback is, I don't have time for this, or I don't have money, right? <laughs> or I have I, I have to go get some approval or or the, the regulation. So there's there's all kinds of pushback, all kinds of difficulty, right? Um, the I think the biggest problem, if you look at talking to owners, is there's an assumption owners only want money and they only care about the profits and only care about the asset. There's a certain level of prestige in owning a hotel, right? You could probably make money simpler in a different you know uh, business, but there is that factor. And um, what we found is that if you go and approach and say I have this hotel deal. Um, and you only talk cost and you never bring up the topic, you never know. We had um, uh, W Bali, for example. We, have a, we, we built a coalition called Hotel Owners for Tomorrow to try to get hotel owners to commit to this. And the owner of the W Bali committed to it. And my colleague was at Starwood at the time. She did that deal. And she had no idea this whole time, knowing the owner, the owner cared about sustainability because she never, she, and she admits, at Starwood, I never was given any information to give them about sustainability in the hotel development process. And so the pushback from hoteliers and owners is that you know, they don't care or we don't have to think, but I think it's because there was a systemic problem of not wanting to discuss this. Put, you know, shove it under the rug, I might lose the deal. Um, but I think now the, the tides have turned and you have to talk about it. You have young, affluent, crazy, rich Asian owners going green hmm. who are wealthier, well-educated, want to make a difference, want to leave a legacy and want to change things. And this is the moment to talk to them about it. Wow. It's not about money. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let me choose the last question. I think the last question, the, this is for Pa Agung. There is two questions actually that related each other, Pa. Okay. What is the next for Jimbaran as a region? Okay, uh, I take the Agung ones. Uh, what <laughs> are the plans road network development? Oh, so, um, two actually connected, right? yeah. so uh, the South Bali, in the Bukit area, uh, specifically the Badung Regency is planning uh, the, something called South Bali Loop that is connecting between uh, Jimbaran Pecatu and then uh, South and then Nusa Dua. South Bali Loop is already in the plan, is under uh, uh, Kadis PU, yeah, PU uh, infrastructure, infrastructure Department and uh, what are the other one? It's deleted, so. Yeah, actually what is... Jimbaran. The plan for Jimbaran, uh, I would like to uh, get stakeholders, uh, I, uh, we, we cannot do it alone, uh, work with the village and stakeholders to be able to create a new destination for Bali. Uh, we like uh, Ubud or Sanur as a is good sustainability, I think like that, that area. Uh, we feel that like Kutal against Minyak, the development is like overdone, infrastructure cannot catch up. So. Uh, how to balance that is basically by make sure the road wide enough, setback do properly, uh, uh, parking pockets, and like uh, make sure connectivity, pedestrian friendly, uh, those things, and uh, makes the the car like you know uh, a bit, uh, yeah, it's like L A and London maybe like. <laughs> okay. Thank you. So. This is what we can uh, what we can share for the time being, ladies and gentlemen. I'm, and unfortunately, I'm very sorry that we cannot answer all of these questions yet. But um, thank you very much, gentlemen, and uh, please give a warm applause to them. And uh, thank you, everyone.